as stars age, um, such as this red dwarf, it's cooling and shrinking and a lot of the material is ejecting via solar flares. As it cools and shrinks and collapses on itself like a collapsing balloon, the material is actually undergoing Markland convection. Markland convection is named after Goran Markland. It's a process that takes place in filamentary currents of plasma, which is an ionized gas. It's not gas, it's plasma. It's a completely uh, different phase transition than gas. It occurs within a plasma with an associated electric field that causes convection of ions and electrons inward towards a central twisting filamentary axis. A temperature gradient within the plasma will also cause chemical separation based on different ionization potentials. Chemical separation. Keep that in note. The plasma constituents will recombine and become neutral as this process occurs and that recombination is called plasma recombination which is exothermic. I go over that in a different video and thus no longer will be under the influence of the electromagnetic forcing. The electromagnetic forcing is what keeps young stars such as the Sun the big hollow balloon like shells. That's what keeps it big and round. When it doesn't have electromagnetic forcing from recombination as well as Markland convection the shell will uh, shrink and collapse upon itself and gravitationally collapse. The ionization potentials will thus determine where the chemicals will be deposited. That's very, very important. In other words, here, I'll bring up a picture for you. Here we have Markland convection, filamentary axis, Fe is iron, Si is silicon, Mg is magnesium, S is sulfur, C is carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, hydrogen, helium. And it separates. These materials separate based off their ionization potential. So the temperature increases as you go outwards. So it's cooler and cooler regions. This is where the coolest region is in the center of the star. And outwards you get the hotter and hotter regions. Which is backwards. In establishment science, young stars are hottest in their interior and coldest on their surface, which is wrong. They're actually the coolest in their interiors, where the material is undergoing Markland convection and falling towards the central regions. And that's the velocity, I, I believe, that's towards the central uh, filamentary axis. We know this happens because we're standing on the evidence. Here is the Earth. The iron is in the center. And you have nickel in there, which is you know not on here. And you have sulfur, magnesium, a little bit of iron, obviously, aluminum, silicon, oxygen. And on outwards, you have the atmosphere, which was nitrogen, uh, helium, hydrogen. Here are a few words. Or another addition to that page, you know, nickel, silicon, magnesium, sulfur, carbon, and on the way outwards. This is how stars are layered. Not the unreasonable and confusing establishment method where they have it as metallic hydrogen. That doesn't make any sense. It's actual metal that's in the center of evolving stars. And there they are. As this process of Markland convection continues, it forms the little earth in the center and all the material still is convecting inside of it. In other, word, in other words, this is uh, these are new earths that are inside of these gas giants. Establishment science likes to ignore these objects but clearly we can reason that those little uh, iron rocky balls in the center are still in formation. Those are going to be the new Earths. When these gas giants take up orbit around a different hotter host star, they're going to have their atmosphere ripped away and it's going to expose the core, which will look exactly, most exactly like the Earth. Basically, 
These are going to shrink and cool and die, and their outer layers will be ripped away too, and you know, it will be a, a super earth, and then it will become an ocean world, and then eventually it will look like this. Hopefully people can understand that Marklin convection is a very well-known uh, process inside of plasma science. So ignoring it is detrimental to star sciences. Even Hans Alfein himself, he showed that elements with the lowest ionization potential are brought closest to the axis. And form, and form concentric hollow cylinders, which radii increase with ionization potential. Well, unfortunately, it doesn't come out as hollow cylinders. Hollow structure is right, but since gravity is taking over, there can't be cylinders in outer space. Gravitation makes them as spheres. That's what stars are. The drift of ionized matter from the surroundings into the rope means the rope acts as an ion pump, which evacuates the surrounding regions, producing areas of extremely low density. Well, there you go. I will link this page uh, to the bottom. Hopefully, people can understand that uh, this isn't this isn't pseudoscience. This is uh, this is what's called ignored science. Astronomers don't like talking about plasma and what it actually does because it doesn't suit their agendas for getting grants and funds and money. To get grants, funds, and money you have to, uh, you have to agree with Big Bang creationism and you have to agree that everything's figured out, that they just have to fill in the holes with mathematical formulas and other nonsense. Well, there it is. Everybody, uh, Comment below if you have many more questions. This is what you need to know.